Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to automate the ascending triangle pattern detection in Python. We can also include it in a full trading strategy and run a complete backtest on historical data. I backtested this pattern on gold prices data for 57 trading days using the five minutes time frame, and the results were around 383% in returns with a win rate of 86%. I used one to 10 leverage to boost the returns, although this will also increase the risk, so it's not really recommended for real life trading. I also included a small commission fee to account for some trading cost. This is an example of the pattern detected automatically by our algorithm. We will go through the details of the pattern and the coding section on how to implement this into an automated trading system. If you are interested in the coding part, you can download the code for free from the link in the description of this video. This way you can run the code from your side, experiment with the parameters and get to better understand how this approach works. To detect the pattern, first we need to detect what we call pivot points. So these are the swing highs and the swing lows points that we can see on this chart as red triangles. The way we do this is by checking if the height of the current candle is greater than the highs of neighboring candles on the left and right side. Same to detect the swing low, we check if the low of the current candle is lower than the neighboring lows of candles on the left and on the right. As to how many candles we should consider left or right, this is a parameter that can be optimized or changed depending on the asset we are trading. This way we can easily experiment with different values. There is a small trap here to be aware of to avoid look ahead bias usually. When we are checking the current candle, we can look to the left side candles for comparison. So this is looking into the past data, but we can't look on the right side candles because that would be looking into the future. I know it does make a lot of sense, but it's also a mistake that can sneak into our backtest without being noticed. So we should take this into account when we are building the coding part. Then we will fit these pivot points into slopes, taking into account the last three or four of these highs and lows and then we will check whether the slope of the highs is almost horizontal and the slope of the lows is definitely positive. In this case, we have this shape that we call an ascending triangle. Now, usually we will wait for a breakout above the high slope or even below the low slope to know which direction the price will prefer in the future. And that's the strategy we will be backtesting in the coding part. I have tried a very simple trading approach just to run this indicator in a full system and a complete backtest. Obviously, this is not a full trading strategy to be deployed live yet, but it's a good starting point if you like this trading style. Now let's move on to the coding part where I will show you how I coded all of this in Python. Then we will take a look at the backtest and how we can improve this system. So this is the code. It's a Jupyter notebook file. If you noticed, I've split the work this time into two files. We have the utilities Python file where I've assembled all the uh, functions, the helper functions that we're going to use. So this way we can refurbish these or recycle these for other videos as well, for other codes. You can also download this utilities file as well and use it on your own. So these are basically functions that you can call, import from this file and call for plotting, for fetching data, for example, this one downloads the data from Y Finance, load data Y Finance. Some of these are for plotting. Some of these are just for computing slopes, detecting flags as well, uh, pre-compute triangle flags on a data frame, um, interpolate from points in between points for plotting, bit bands from points as well, and then plot candles with pivots and flags as well. This file, again, you can download it, import it and use it for any strategy you are building or for any code you are building. Now we're going to use it in our Jupyter notebook file here. So from utilities, I'm importing everything for now. I'm calling actually the load data Y finance, providing the symbol of gold, start date and end date. And by default, it's going to take five minutes time, time frame data. Then I'm adding pivots. So when we add pivots, this is usually the uh, pivot points. So in other words, these swing highs and swing lows here. So whenever we uh, call these for a data frame we provide the window as well so that's window four for example and we have the uh, open high low close adjusted close the volume pivot high and pivot low true or false whether this candle this particular row represents a pivot high or a pivot low calling the function plot candles with pivots providing the data frame with this information pivot high and pivot low columns between zero and 200 so this is the starting index and the ending index so we're plotting 200 candles, starting from the first candle. And this is going to plot the candles, as we can see here, and the pivot highs and the pivot lows. Now, before we continue, I'm going to change one parameter here, the window, which is equal to four. 
So we're taking four candles on the left, four candles on the right for each of the candles to compare with the neighbors to uh, detect these pivots. If I increase this number, let's say to eight, and we compute, notice what's going to change here. I'm going to run the plot again. Notice the number of the pivots or the swing highs and lows is going to decrease because now we are more selective. So if you want to be more selective with these pivots, you want to detect those sharp or high intensity pivots, you can increase this number to 8, 10, depending on how you want to compare. So this is basically comparing with eight candles on the left and eight candles on the right. Actually, it doesn't look as bad for now, but it's skipping these two pivot lows, which are interesting for us since we are detecting small uh, scale triangles as well. So I'm going to put it back to four or three even. It should be fine, so it's not skipping anything. This should be enough for our slopes to be fitted, and then we detect the triangle patterns. We need to define some constants. The look back, 35, meaning for each candle, I will be testing if it's preceded by a triangle shape. And I'm going to look back 35 candles. This is the window within which I'm going to test if I have a triangle or not, okay, for each candle. So I'm looking just 35 candles before the current candle. Then we have the pivot window is three and we have the maximum high slope. So the maximum high slope shouldn't exceed plus or minus two to minus four. Why? Because we need the high slope, the slope of the highs or the swing highs to be almost horizontal. If you want to be more selective, you can put it one, for example, 10 to minus four. And then the minimum low slope, remember we're looking for an ascending triangle. So the uh, slope of the uh, swing lows should be positive. But how positive? It has to have a minimum. The minimum here is set to 7, 10 to minus 4. You can increase this if you also want to be even more selective to uh, 0 0.001, for example, 0, 0, 0010, and so on. The minimum R squared, whenever we're going to fit the slopes into those lines, whenever we will be fitting these points into those slopes here, how good this fit is. Is defined by this r square. If the r square is close to one, this means that the points are very close to the uh, fit uh, line, to the fit slope, which is actually ideal if you get something close to nine, 0 0.9, 0 0.95. It means the points are perfectly aligned together. Now, we don't want to be very selective because then we will get very little signals. We're going to put this around 0 0.6. 0 0.7 is my preferred number, but for now we're going to put 0 0.6 to increase the number of signals. Here we're going to loop over the data frame. We're going to call the function detect flag. So for each candle of index i within the data frame, we're going to provide all the parameters that we have just defined here in the previous cell. So basically, if we have a flag, it's going to return the flag properties. So the slope and the points, the swing highs, you see these as tuples here in the list and the swing lows as well. So that's a dictionary of uh, then we have the slope high, the slope of the highs after the fitting and the slope of the lows after the fitting. So the dictionary has basically all the information we need for each of the triangles. And this is it, basically. So whenever a flag or a triangle is detected, we're going to clone this information for the next three candles because the signal length or the validity of the signal is equal to three candles. Because later we can simply compare in the data frame which candle is breaking above or below the, um, the flag or the triangle. We can see that we have the triangle flag false or true, and we have the triangle highs, triangle lows, in, in different columns. So we have all the information split and assembled within this data frame to be able to plot these later on and plot the signals and also use these for the uh, backtesting of the strategy. So these are our signals. These are the indexes where flags have occurred in the data frame. This is the strategy. We're using backtesting.py package and I'm defining the uh, short signal strategy, for example, here. Stop loss buffer of 1%. So that's the stop loss distance that's equal to 1% of the uh, entry price, either in the positive or negative direction, depending on where we are trading, long or short. So for now, we're using a short only strategy. We're looking for those ascending triangles that do not break above the uh, triangle itself. So by default, the take profit uses a risk reward ratio of 1.5. So the uh, take profit distance is equal to the stop loss distance times 1.5. And this is basically it, actually. The size is all 
the equity. For now, I'm using a leverage of one to 10. I've added a commission. We're starting with $10,000 trading on close. So on close of the candles and exclusive orders equal true, meaning we only allow one trade at a time. Now, before we backtest the strategy, let's try and compute or visualize any of the signals just to make sure that everything is working properly. We're pre-computing the triangle flags, for example, using the function from the utilities.py and providing all the parameters that we have defined before. Then we plot candles with pivots and flags, providing data frame and starting index and the end index. And this is one of the um, signals that we can see here. So as we can see, I'm going to zoom in a bit. We have this almost horizontal line provided by three points, three pivots, and this positive line as well provided by these three swing lows and we have this shape of triangle now realistically the breakout is happening here at this candle which is also very very good because it's an uptrend and we have the triangle then the breakout happens we could enter at this point but also there's a breakout happening here before so that's an earlier sign we put a stop loss wide enough using this lower slope for example we could still catch the uptrend. Now we can start the backtest using uh, the backtesting package. I'm defining the new class short signal strategy. So we're using a short only strategy in this case because I uh, want to detect those ascending triangles where the price couldn't break above the horizontal line or the upper highs. In this case, the price will revert back. We can put our stop loss within 1% of the entry of the short a return. Uh, a risk reward ratio of 1.5 for the take profit and that's it we basically short the market with these conditions so i'm using a small commission just for the spread and some trading fees we're trading on a closing of the candles exclusive traders true which means that we only allow one open trade at a time we don't want multiple signals or duplicated signals to open multiple trades then to boost the performance i'm using a leverage of 1 to 10. so testing for two months is providing us a returns of 366 percent with these conditions an annual return of that much it's unrealistic actually i wouldn't take this uh, number as is because it's not tested for long enough then we have a maximum drawdown of minus 20 percent so this is huge it's risky and the catch here well although we have a win rate of 92 percent in this case this is going to be changing every time you run the code because you will get different candles remember that the data is going to be updated depending on when you are running the code and what is the starting and end date we have these results but there's a catch we only got these for 14 trades and this is the main weak point of this backtest we don't have enough statistical data to confirm that the strategy works well the solution in this case is also to compute the other flag patterns um, the other triangle patterns the descending triangle pattern uh, detect the uh, breakout in the positive direction and build a strategy that is short and long at the same time when we multiply or we allow to detect more than one pattern and we allow trading in both directions this number of trades is going to uh, increase so this strategy is definitely to be revisit revisited in the future in a future video so let me know what you think in the comments section how we can improve it what we can include in this and maybe when you download the code and you run it on your own and you try experimenting a bit keep us informed in the comments section tell me what we can do for the future videos and this will be it for this video i hope you guys found the information helpful if so please leave a comment support the channel leave a like uh, if you have any ideas how to improve things any other ideas of trading strategies please leave them in the comment section let me know what you think until our next one trade safe and see you next time